Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim here in Brunei. Now you may have noticed it's been a long time since I put the last video out and that's because I've been prototyping all the controls and that hasn't gone too well. It's just because of the parts. I'm not able to get all the parts that I require here in Brunei. I have to wait six weeks for the parts to come from the UK if I do need them. In the meantime, I've been updating the website and I've been helping a lot of you guys out in the background. So let me explain what I've been doing. As you can see, this is my version one SIM throttle. I made this a long time ago and I took it completely apart to put onto Fusion and share the plans. However, I then couldn't remember how to put it back together and that took a little while. And when I did put it back together, all the electronics inside had failed because it sat out in the Brunei humidity for a couple of years and all the switches had just corroded they were completely useless. All the encoders and potentiometers had failed. So I meant taking it all back apart again, replacing everything. And I cheated really. I took all the servos out because it was motorized. Not the trim wheels, it was just the throttles and the speed lever. But now it's just a manual. It's just stuck in manual at the moment. And I'm going to use the servos for version 2. But in the meantime, at least I've got a working throttle that I can practice on in the sim here. And once I do get it working and the prototype's fully working, obviously I'll share the plans. So that's taken a couple of weeks at least. Moving over to my right, your left, is the rudder pedals. Now the rudder pedals, again, are version 1, so they're a bit too small. But because they work so well, they're just going to stay there for the time being. I will then come along and I am going to copy the exact same design but just make them slightly bigger. Now on the website the design is already made bigger, I just need to create them. Because these work really well. They've got pots in for differential braking and they go, got a good force feel backwards and forwards. I'll show you those in a bit. Of course on to my next big dilemma and that was the yoke and the control columns. You've probably seen on social media, Instagram and Facebook, I created a drain pipe basically, PVC drain pipe, dual link control yokes. Now that worked exceptionally well for the aileron control. It completely failed in the pitch axis and you'd move one side and the other side wouldn't move and basically the PVC pipe would just twist along its axes in torsion and it looked absolutely useless. Now I was expecting it to fail in the aileron because that was connected by cables to each side. Long short of it, it failed, it's out for the time being until once again I can get some more aluminium tube. Once I've got aluminium tube, I'll get some way to weld it up and create a solid structure. That will fix that problem and we'll have dual yokes coming up in the future. So I guess that's enough waffling for now and let me show you what we're going to do. I've got 50 pound springs for force feedback and for centering and it's not quite enough. It's so easy to move at the top end here that I want to change them out for these 100 pound springs. And that's the first job I'm going to do and see if that makes any difference. Again, it's all just prototyping to see what works and what doesn't. Okay, so that feels much better now. All I want to do is make sure that the neutral position is at seven degrees. And I've got this digital scale here. Next is to fit the control yoke. And because I've mounted this in the floor, when it should be based on top of the floor, this tube is too low, so I need to extend it slightly. And this bit of PVC pipe was from a failed yoke experiment. But luckily enough, it's perfect for fitting in here.
got a packing piece and we have another PVC pipe. That should go over there like that. And here is the yet that I'll be using. There's just control wires. In there you go. So what I need to do now is measure the height of the control column and this point here should be the top of the yoke should be 810 millimeters from the floor. Pretty much the right size now, right angle, just got to fasten it together. finish the top section off I need to put the chart clip back on and that just simply mounts with two bolts onto the base there so this is not how I would do it if this was going to be permanently fitted to my sim it just doesn't feel right it's not really good enough but it will do just to get the sim flying to start with I will still go for the dual controls when I find some aluminium. So the next stage is to make sure that the yoke is perfectly square which I don't think it quite is yet. That's it there. And then to secure the bottom of the control column to the internal post which I'll do now. With the yoke complete, it's now time to look at the rudder pedals. These are version 1, these were in my original sim. They were designed to fit what I call is the baby sim, but now obviously going full size and these are too small. However, they work exceptionally well. They've got differential braking left and right, and they've got interlinks backwards and forwards, like so. They ride on CNC rails, and I've used the pots from the old yoke assembly. If I tip this up right inside at the back there is the potentiometer which takes the feed from the pedals. On the sides of the pedals are the differential brake pots and they just simply work like that. I'm going to fit these back in position and then we'll look at version 1 throttle assembly. While I'm lying here giggling to myself because I have a small confession and that is I screwed up. Unlike designing this all on Fusion 360 so I knew it would fit and it's also my third attempt, the control system this really is my first attempt so it hasn't gone to plan. Now the rudders they work perfectly well they just need to be enlarged to fill the gap properly. However for the yoke when I came to fit it into the yoke floor, the control con floor section of the plans, that can't be changed, it has to be in that position. But the yoke is five centimeters, two inches too far aft, and it needs to go forward five centimeters. And the only way I can do that is by reducing the width of the MIP floor by five centimeters. Now, as you can imagine, when you've built the whole cockpit structure on the MIP floor, that is not a simple task but I will change the plans to reflect this ASAP. In the time being, let me show you my throttle quadrant. Again, that's version one and is in the process of being updated on Fusion as well. And here we have my version one throttle assembly. Now I was really pleased with this when I first got this created. It's worked absolutely fantastic. It was powered by servos. Just recently they've removed all the servos and it's just purely manual and that's because I want to use the servos for version 2 and I don't want to go and buy new servos, it's just me being a bit tight, cheap on a budget. However, everything does work, trim wheels, that's a lie, the trim wheels do not work, they are just fixed, but that will become in version 2. Speed brake works and so does the flat lever. To connect my version 1 throttle assembly up, it's got three connections, two of them being USB, one for Arduino and one for Leo Bodner and one at the front, 12 volts to power the backlighting. These are passed through USB cables, 
because just here will sit a USB port and we'll do that now. Amazon Basics 10 port USB. So we have the USB input, USB power cable, throttle Arduino and the Leo Bodner card. And on this one will be the yoke assembly and rudder pedals. And this is where all the problems started to arise. Once I got the sim up and running, all the little fiddly things became very apparent. The odd caption that wasn't going out, you'd switch on fuel pump one and fuel pump four would switch on. So there's a bit of cross modulation in all the electronics which had to be sorted. Now this actually took nearly three days. It's, that just goes to show you how much programming there is and how much wiring there is in this sim. It was just trial and error over and over again. And here we are, we've finally got the, the sim into the air after many trials. Trust me, it didn't go this smoothly on the first attempt when I realised the controls were back to front. Now, I'm going to step out of the cockpit and let George, the UK's youngest pilot, take controls. Now, he was very detrimental to the sim because he was able to point out how everything should work and what everything should You're be right. doing. So with George's help, everything went a lot quicker and a lot smoother. He was able to point out what needed doing and when it needed doing. And as you can see, this is his first attempt in the sim and he absolutely nails it. I'll let George take it from here. Well guys, that brings us to the end of this episode. This is probably how not to do the controls. If you look behind me, you can already see that the yoke is off to one side. It doesn't self-centre and it just has no feel whatsoever. The springs just aren't strong enough. A big shout out to George for helping out. That's it from me. Until the next episode, I'll catch you later. Sim out guys. <laughs>